Hi folks, I'm from HanAndroid.com where we get on Android every day. Anyway, I got some great news for you guys. Now you can root a Qualcomm based Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge, such as all the US models, AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon, and I think there's also Qualcomm based international models. Now this root method will most likely erase everything on your phone. So before beginning, back up everything on your phone. You can use the smart switch app uh, or the PC version or the Mac version uh, from straight from Samsung to back up your videos, audio, whatever. And for backing up apps without root, you can go ahead and use Helium app, which I highly recommend, which I use to actually back up all of uh, my daughters uh, since she's been using this in Thailand all of her games and stuff. So go ahead and back up everything before you do because you will most likely need to do a factory reset when doing this root method. And this root method is a little bit iffy. It's based on engineer boot image, which basically turns your phone into sort of a developer phone. Not everything's perfect. There's a lot of little things you have to do to get it working right. So I don't really recommend it unless you're like a hardcore rooter like myself. You may want to wait for a little bit more stable root. I mean, if you do everything in this tutorial, you'll get your phone working just fine. I'm just saying there's a lot of steps involved. This engineer boot is not perfect yet. I'm sure somebody's gonna come up with something a little bit better in the future. So you may wanna wait for that. But if you can't wait, um, let me show you how to do it step by step. Let's go do this, baby. All right guys, first thing you will wanna check, uh, this root method will work pretty much on all the US models. I have not tested on all the US models, but it's supposed to, all right? Anything running Snapdragon, it should also work. Um, go to about device, make sure you got Android 6.0.1. Uh, in the future, if you're watching this, it might not work. So make sure um, you're on 6.0.1 for this root method. Again, this root method should work with any Qualcomm based Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge. I'm using the S7 Edge for this example, SMG 935T. For the Exynos based Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge, um, there is another safer root method. You can go and follow that at galaxyS7root.com. All right, once you have seen this, let's go ahead and go to build number. Go hit it a bunch of times. All right, hit it like five times until it says developer mode has been turned on. All right, and also go ahead and go into developer options. Uh, make sure OEM unlock is checked on and also the USB debugging is checked on like that. All right, also back up everything before you do this because things can go wrong and don't blame me if you lose everything. Um, rooting, sometimes that can happen. So back up everything in your phone, back up everything, all right, before you begin. All right, once you have done that, let's go ahead and power off our phone and we're gonna go ahead and put it into uh, download and download mode. All right, next guys, you're gonna go ahead and hold down volume down, center home, and power once it's powered off. And you will see a warning screen like below. Go ahead and hit the volume up key, all right? And go ahead and connect it to a micro USB computer, uh, micro USB to your computer, all right? And let's go to our computer. Hi guys, go to my site, um, galaxyS7root.com and uh, go ahead and click on root Qualcomm. That will have all the files you need. Uh, if you go ahead and scroll down, you will see all the files you need. Uh, Samsung USB drivers, download fastboot.zip, um, download modified Odin, download SuperSU, download modified ENG boot for Galaxy S7 if you have a Galaxy S7 or modify ENG boot for Galaxy S7 Edge if you have a Galaxy S7 Edge. All right, once downloaded, um, you're gonna go ahead and unzip Odin-modified. Go ahead and extract all the files. This will extract it into your downloads Odin-modified uh, directory there. And also go ahead and download uh, the ENG boot uh, for Galaxy S7 is this one and Galaxy S7 Edge is this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, the second one here since I'm using a Galaxy S7 Edge. All right, go ahead and go into Odin. Go ahead and go into Odin modified uh, directory here. Go ahead and run Odin Prince Comz.exe. All right, you should see this uh, blue highlighted com uh, box. All right, if you don't see that, um, go ahead and run the Samsung USB driver that you should have downloaded earlier. Go ahead and uh, run that and unplug and plug your. Uh, USB cable and you should be able to now see uh, this blue highlighted uh, box. If you see that, you're good to go. 
Next, go ahead and choose AP. Go to your downloads folder. Uh, go ahead and choose the Samsung G935X for S7 Edge and G930X for S7. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the G935X, hit open, and I'm going to hit start. All right, this will modify the, um, this will actually flash the modified boot image, uh, which will allow you to root um, your Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge. All right, at this point, um, you will probably have ended up in a boot loop. So what we'll have to do is reset it into a uh, stock recovery, do a factory reset. Now there is a way to restore the stock boot image, get it booting again. I'll have that on my site, um, stock boot image. If, if you reflash that using Odin, um, you'll be able to boot it. But I'm gonna do a factory reset. So go ahead and hold down volume down and power and uh, center home. As soon as it resets, we're gonna slide this finger up to the volume up, all right? All right, now it's reset it, go to volume up. So volume up, center home and power. Let go if this is uh, recovery booting. And we'll do a factory reset at this point. Um, that's because we ended up in a boot loop. Now, some of you may have been able to boot through, but in most cases, you will end up in a boot loop. You'll have to do a factory reset. Um, that will clear out everything. All right, go ahead and do a factory reset again. Um, this will erase everything on your phone, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and do a factory reset, say yes. And um, if you, you know, didn't back up your apps and stuff, um, you can always reflash the stock boot image, uh, reboot your phone, back up all your apps, everything, and then restart. I'm gonna go ahead and reboot system now. All right, and we should be on our way to go. And I'll be back when this completely boots. All right guys, um, once your phone has booted up, just simply go ahead and sign in and we will continue. All right guys, once rebooted, we're gonna go ahead and have to re-enable uh, developer options, go into settings. All right, go ahead and go to about device, go to the build number, hit it a bunch of times until it says developer mode has been turned on. Hit the back button, go to developer options, make sure OEM is locked on, uh, USB debugging is checked on, and then go ahead and connect it to your computer via micro USB cable. All right, if you see allow access to device data, um, you can actually just hit allow there. All right, leave that there, and let's go to our computer. All right, um, go back to your download folder, and we're gonna need to install some files. Um, go ahead and unzip fastboot.zip, go ahead and hit extract all, and you will get a folder called Fastboot with all these files you need, right? And also you'll need to unzip the Super SUV 2.74 S7QC.zip, all right? Double click it, hit extract all, extract, all right? Um, go ahead and select all these files, do a right click copy, go back to your Fastboot folder, do a right click paste, all right, just like that. And then go ahead and go to uh, start search and type CMD. And sorry if this thing is really small. Go to CD downloads, enter. Go ahead and type CD, fast boot, enter. And go ahead and type ADB devices, all right? And um, you may have to go to your phone, make sure uh, sometimes USB debugging um, pops up here, so make sure you enable on your phone before you go ahead. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and type root.bat. All right, and you will see that it's working. Uh, ADB shell mount, ADB push, and hopefully this will give us full root. Crossing my fingers. All right, that worked, install. Go ahead and hit accept on here. All right guys, um, it's sort of hanging, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and unplug the phone real quick. And we're gonna plug it back in and try it again. And it actually worked. All right, and it booted. Now I've got custom unlocked there. 
and hopefully it will reboot. All right, I got to boot it. The unsupported SD card, because I turned it into internal. I'm going to have to reformat that. That's nothing to do with this root tutorial, by the way. All right, I think the, the part where it's supposed to work, it didn't work correctly. So I'm going to replug it in. All right, and I'm going to run that command again. I'm going to go back here and run the command again. Root.bat. Let me go ahead and run it again. For some reason, it, uh, it didn't copy over the Super SU, and I'm not getting the Super SU app. So hopefully this time it'll work. All right, it's trying to install Super SU. Up, oh, it worked. I think this time it worked. So I had to run it second time to get the Super SU uh, installed. That's done, and hopefully I'll have complete root here. And boom shakalaka. All right, let me go ahead and run this. And no errors, boom shakalaka. Let me go ahead and download um, rooted app, like titanium backup app, and let's see what happens. All right guys, moment of the truth. Here we go. Let's go ahead and launch Titanium Backup app and boom shakalaka. Make sure you hit grant, right? Um, let me go ahead and show you all the things you have to make it run uh, flawless. Now it actually took me after that last time, it actually took me about two hours to get it all working correctly. Uh, now it's running flawless, but you're gonna have, the first thing you're gonna have to do is install BusyBox, all right? Go ahead and download um, this BusyBox app uh, by Sterickson, uh, this one here, all right? And make sure you install not to SU XBIN, make sure you install it to System XBIN, all right? Hit install. Uh, make sure you install BusyBox. Let me go ahead and show you which that app that is. All right, it's this one here, busy box. After that, go ahead and install the Trickster Mod kernel settings. Very important. If you don't do this, your phone's gonna lag like crazy. Open it up. This is the first thing you'll do after your root. Go into General, right? And set Governor to Interactive. Now, the reason why your phone starts lagging when you install the engineered uh, boot image, which we did to root, is because this will set it to performance and basically your phone will run at the highest frequency. And if you leave it like that, it will start lagging because it's just running on the highest frequency. So set that to interactive. Uh, make sure you hit, like, make sure you hit this button after you change it. So set it to interactive. Make sure you hit this check button, right? And you also make sure it's set on boot. So make sure kernel settings is on like that, all right? And then let your phone sit for a little bit because it's probably been running and it'll probably lag like crazy. And once you have that, you will also need to do this, get buildprop.editor. Uh, if you don't do this, make sure you hit grant. If you don't do this, uh, every time you reboot, you'll have to um, re-log into your Wi-Fi uh, router. So go ahead and search for ro.secure, um, it's down here, go ahead. And Go all the way down to ro.securitystorage.support. Change this to false, all right? Just type false and hit that key. And then reboot, and then after that, when you log into Wi-Fi, it will remember it, and you will not have Wi-Fi problems. And you may be getting these security errors, all right? So get rid of that, uh, which is the final step. A step. Go ahead and install Titanium Backup App. Um, you can get the pro version, or you can just get rid of it. Go to uh, go ahead and go go ahead and do search for um, security, right? And you'll find this app called Secure Security Log Agent. Go ahead and click on that and freeze. I already froze it or uninstall it, all right? Otherwise, if you don't do that, you'll keep getting errors and it will lag also. So those, I think, three things I mentioned here. If you don't do those, you'll not be able to use your phone. But after that, everything works flawless. Uh, everything is fast. And one, one additional thing you can do actually to help, um, go into developer options and also force uh, GPU rendering. 
use 2D hardware acceleration and application. Force GPU rendering. Do all of those and you will have flawless fruit working on your T-Mobile Galaxy uh, S7 Edge or AT&T T-Mobile. Actually, this will work on any pretty much uh, any uh, Qualcomm based Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge, all right? Um, next, you're gonna go, uh, let me go ahead and show you that Nox is not enabled, all right? And you can see uh, we did not void the warranty. You can see uh, my Nox is zero times zero, all right? Uh, Samsung Pay not, may not work, all right? Because you have root, but you can always unroot and re-enable Samsung Pay, which is the beauty of this root method. Uh, anyway, that's how you root your uh, Qualcomm-based Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge. Anyway, have a great day. Now we have root. Don't forget to donate to the guy who actually found this root method. I'll have a link to the XDA thread and also donate link. Buy him a beer, you know, at least. <laughs> Send him like five bucks. All right, have a great day. And as always, stay <coughs> on Android. Hi, click here to subscribe. Click here to subscribe.